You had mentioned, Brad, some different immune cells, uh, type 2 innate lymphoid cells, eosinophils, mast cells. We're starting to sort of learn more about the roles of all of these. Um, I'm curious to know your opinions, Nick, on sort of how these all play together. And, you know, I, I, I think, you know, in my clinic oftentimes I try to identify, you know, whether these patients have this steroid responsive, non-steroid responsive, exacerbation prone, non-exacerbation prone type of asthma. And I think we're all sort of without maybe necessarily thinking about it, classifying our patients as T2 high or T2 low. Curious to know if you see someone who doesn't have sort of that, that um, profile, do you immediately think that they're asthma or there's something else going on or how do you approach that? Well, Neil, for many years we thought about asthma as a one-size-fits-all disease. And we know now it is a heterogeneous disease as clinicians like all of us. Uh, we've seen patients who respond to one therapy versus the other. Patients can present late in the disease. I'm an adult pulmonologist, so I see patients who are older who never had asthma in childhood but had asthma later on in life. And what drives asthma in that population may be different than what drives asthma earlier on. Uh, so now we have a new look at this old disease. Uh, and one of the way to look at it is clinically. How does it present? These are what we call phenotypes. So uh, a major phenotype, for example, is allergic asthma. This is a large population of asthmatics that starts early in life. But there are other phenotypes, and T2 low and T2 high may actually help if you use certain biomarkers. But clinically, how they present, the onset of the disease may help us sort of subdivide this, um, this disease. And obviously, that may reflect the response to therapy. For example, in the T2 high bucket, we have the allergic asthma, the exercise-induced asthma. Uh, but we also have the late onset eosinophilic asthma. These are patients who are not allergic, uh, but they have high eosinophils. That belongs to uh, that population. On the other hand, in the T2 low, we have late onset asthma that is non-eosinophilic, uh, less responsive to treatment, uh, smokers with asthma, obesity-related asthma. These are some subtypes or clinical types. These are the phenotypes. But People are now, okay, fine, phenotypes are good, but within the phenotypes, there are several other, what we call endotypes, that actually reflect the mechanism of these uh, phenotypes. And that's probably what we need to go to address targeted therapies. And we'll right. talk about that in a few minutes. And I think that becomes one of the big questions is, are you a grouper? Are you putting all these people together? Or are you a splitter? And, and does that matter? I mean, I think that is sort of the question that all of us are challenged with and that we're hearing a lot of buzz about in our field is, is you know, is it helpful to sort of define, or is there significant overlap between these individuals that have allergic, eosinophilic, late onset, early onset? And, and these are the questions I think I, that we're challenged I think challenged with, with a mild population, moderate asthma, maybe it doesn't make a difference in treatment, maybe same way, but in the more severe asthma, I think uh, the splitters would win here. Yeah, yeah. I actually think that's a really important point. Um, and it's driven in part by factors other than biology. It's driven by factors such as cost. If there was not a cost issue, we might start splitting much earlier and going after individual phenotypes. But since some of these newer products come with an enormous expense, we tend to reserve them and start splitting in the severe group right, right. rather than the mild and moderate groups. Right. I, I agree with Nick yeah. on that. And the question is, how, do you, how far down the pharmacolog pharmacologic chain do you walk down before you decide a biologic important? Do you do add a third, fourth, fifth long-term controller before you finally say enough's enough and you need a biologic? I think that's, we'll talk about that later, but it's an important thing to keep in yeah. mind.